नमस्कार राष्ट्रपति जी मे आई हैव द परमिशन टू बिगिन द क्रेडेंशियल सेरेमनी सर आई हैव दर टू प्रेजेंट हिज एक्सीलेंसी डॉक्टर राल्फ हेक्नर एम्बेसडर डेजिग्नेट ऑफ स्विटरलैंड Your Excellency, Honorable President of the Republic of India, please accept my credentials. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, it is an honor to be Ambassador of Switzerland to one of the most important countries of this planet today, India. And it is a privilege to hand over my credentials to you, a friend of Switzerland. You made us the honor with a state visit last year to my country. The Federal Council, all seven members whom you met last year, are sending you and the Indian people their best wishes for good health, for prosperity and peace, three things that we cannot take for granted anymore. Your Excellency, for my tenure, I would have the following priorities. First, I would like to see our important people-to-people -people relations being re-established and further enhanced. Hundreds of thousands of Indian tourists are visiting Switzerland on a yearly basis. Thousands of Indian businessmen and women are visiting Switzerland. And with that, India is one of the most important markets for Switzerland's tourism industry. There are also Swiss businessmen and tourists that are visiting India. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we had to restrict flights and the visits as well. It is important that those visits and flights resume at the earliest. My second priority is I would like to see our long-drawn, ongoing negotiations on a free trade agreement coming to a fair and successful conclusion. Switzerland is a high-tech and an innovation hub in the middle of Europe. Already today, Indian companies in Switzerland are using Switzerland also as a gateway to the European market. I also see our economies are being very complementary. And Swiss businesses located in India are turning the Indian economy already today into an export-oriented economy. Two-thirds of the more than 300 Swiss businesses located in Switzerland are not only producing and manufacturing for the Indian market in India, but they are producing for the export of their produce in all the countries of the world. And with that, Swiss businesses make the Prime Minister's vision of Made in India a reality. Last but definitely not least, I would like to see even closer political, bilateral relations and regular contact at the highest level as you did last year. As democracies and diverse societies, we have the same values and we share them. As federal states, the politic and the political system is very close to our citizens and to the needs of our citizens. And I'm personally convinced that India and Switzerland together can make this world a better place based on the Prime Minister's vision of a human-centric globalization and multilateralism. Finally, personally, I'm very much looking forward to learn more about India's impressive history and cultures. I'm looking forward to meeting Indian people from all walks of life. And I'm looking forward to work with you, Your Excellency, and with the whole Indian government together. And I would like to do that in a constructive and effective way to further strengthen the friendship between our two countries. Thank you very much. Excellency, I warmly accept your credentials. My best wishes to you for a successful tenure in India. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you. Sir, I have the honor to present His Excellency, Mr. Ruben Gauci, High Commissioner Designate of the Republic of Malta. Your Excellency, it is with great honor 
that I am here today to present my credentials to your kind self. I warmly accept your credentials. My best wishes to you for a successful tenure in India. Your Excellency President Ram Nath Kovind, President of the Republic of India. It is with great honor that I, Ruben Gauchi, am here today on the 14th of October 2020 to present to your esteemed self my credentials as High Commissioner of the Republic of Malta to the Republic of India. Despite the unfortunate circumstances in which the world finds itself into, due to the coronavirus pandemic, it is a particular honor for me to present my credentials to Your Excellency this year, 2020, when Malta and India are celebrating the 55th anniversary since the establishment of diplomatic relations on 10th March 1965. I bring to Your Excellency and to the government and people of the Republic of India the sincere greetings and good wishes of the President of the Republic of Malta, His Excellency George Vella, who has entrusted me with the important task of being my country's High Commissioner to your very dear and beloved homeland, India. It is with great enthusiasm and energy that I come to this magnific magnificent land not only to be of service to my country, Malta and the Maltese people, but also to be of benefit to your esteemed country, India, and the great people of India. By continuing to foster Maltese-Indian relations, I am in fact serving both sides, as there is nothing better in life than enhancing friendships and relations. Malta embraces the amplification of the relationship between the two countries, and we are glad to acknowledge that our discussions are becoming more and more frequent, and that we have effectively established a regular calendar of meetings. I note with satisfaction the deepening of cooperation between our two nations in a number of different avenues over the past few years. We must strive to maintain this positive momentum as the coronavirus pandemic has highlighted. Now more than ever, the need for continued cooperation against amongst nations. In spite of the difference in size, both our countries are undergoing robust transformations with an ambitious vision for the future. Both our countries are vibrant democracies, putting the benefit and well-being of our peoples in the center of all our policies. And we are also joined by our common membership of the Commonwealth of Nations. Malta appreciates India's contribution to the Commonwealth's budgets and programs, most notably in promoting trade and development cooperation among members and on the collective measures by members against the removal of democratically elected governments by unlawful means. I am proud to say that Malta has and is also giving its contribution to the Commonwealth. Malta hosted the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in 2005 and in 2015. Malta is also proud to host the Commonwealth Small State Center of Excellence, which has delivered a number of capacity building initiatives targeting Commonwealth small states working on SDGs implementations. I am privileged to note that Malta's diplomatic presence in India, as well as India's diplomatic presence in Malta, demonstrate our commitments in strengthening the ever-growing ties between our countries. I wish to take this opportunity, Your Excellency, to congratulate the Republic of, the Republic of India on being elected as non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council for the period 2021 to 2022, after receiving an overwhelming and deserved vote of 184 out of 192 votes. Malta was pleased to vote for India's candidature. It is indeed significant to note that India has been elected seven times as a member of the Security Council. And may I say that it is indeed important that the world's largest liberal democracy gets to serve in the United Nations Security Council 
on a regular basis. It is my pleasure to inform Your Excellency that Malta has launched its campaign for election to the United Nations Security Council for the term 2023-2024, with elections scheduled for 2022. If elected, this would be Malta's second time on the auspicious Council. Whilst being a small nation, Malta strongly believes in its constructive role among and for the benefit of the community of nations. Malta believes in the motto, small countries, big issues. To conclude, Your Excellency, President Coven, may I say what a great honor it is for myself and my family to be in India. My wife, Dr. Olga Gauci, who is accompanying me today, has a particular love for your wonderful country, its traditions and cultures. She even chose to put on an Indian traditional dress to bear witness to this. My daughter, Alisa, was learning about India much before we knew that we were coming here. And it has been indeed a fulfillment for her to come here and bond with this beautiful country, which we will be calling home for the coming years. We have already been particularly impressed by the hospitality and warmth of the Indian people, always ready to help and always ready to be of service. May the Maltese Indian relations continue to flourish as both our people as well. Thank you. Excellency, thank you for those kind words. Sir, I have the honor to present His Excellency, Mr. Gilbert Shimani Mangole, High Commissioner Designate of the Republic of Botswana. Your Excellency, it is my singular honor and privilege to present to you my credentials. Excellency, I warmly accept your credentials. My best wishes to you for a successful tenure in India. Today, I have the honor to present to Your Excellency Sri Ram Nath Kovind the letters of credence appointing me as the High Commissioner of the Republic of Botswana to India. Please allow me to take this opportunity to convey to Your Excellency the cordial greetings of His Excellency Dr. Mokwezi E. K. Masisi, President of the Republic of Botswana, and extend on behalf of government and the people of Botswana best wishes to the government and people of India. Since establishment of diplomatic relations more than 50 years ago, Botswana and India have had many high-level exchanges, which have not only created an opportunity for open and fruitful discussions, but also contributed to strengthening bilateral ties and deepening friendship between our two peoples. As a result, our countries are now enjoying a comprehensive partnership which is based on mutual trust, equality and mutually beneficial cooperation in various areas. I note with appreciation that India continues to generously offer technical assistance to Botswana in various development fields. This has contributed significantly to our development, capacity in technical key areas, and human resource. Indeed, Botswana still needs friends like India in order to help address many challenges, such as poverty, unemployment, etc. Botswana has also, in its small way, continued to support India, in, in particular in the multilateral fora on many issues of mutual concern. Your Excellency, during my tenure here, my key priority is to continue to enhance our cooperation, especially in the field of trade and investment, tourism, health, agriculture, and education. I am confident that with the support of your government, we will deepen 
this cooperation based on people-to-people -people interaction. I look forward to interacting with the Indian people and visiting many places to appreciate their culture. I also hope that in the near future, we will have the opportunity, Your Excellency, to interact with you. Finally, I want to once more thank government and people of India for the warm welcome and look forward to working with you for the benefit of our peoples. Your Excellency, please accept my warm regards. Thank you. Excellency, thank you for your kind words. Rajpati ji, may I now request you to kindly make your remarks to the heads of mission present. Excellencies, I am delighted to receive your credentials. My heartiest congratulations to you on your appointment. We are living in challenging times. The COVID-19 pandemic has underscored the need for greater global cooperation to ensure our collective health and economic well-being. I am optimistic that the international community will soon find a solution to the pandemic and will emerge stronger and more resilient from the crisis. Excellencies, India enjoys warm and friendly relations with all the three countries represented here. Our ties are deeply rooted in a common vision of peace and prosperity. We are also privileged to share a convergence on defining issues that shape the 21st century narrative. Our multilateral engagement at the United Nations and other international fora such as the Commonwealth African Union and European Union are yielding appreciable results. I would like to thank your governments for supporting India's candidature for the non-permanent seat of UN Security Council for the term 2021-22. We look forward to working closely with your delegations at the United Nations. India attaches great significance and high priority to its relations with Switzerland. Switzerland is one of our largest trading partners in Central Europe. India has been taking a number of steps to increase ease of doing business. We look forward to further Swiss investments into India. Excellency, please convey my warm regards to President Simo Nato Som Ruga, whom I had the pleasure of meeting during my state visit to Switzerland last year. India and Malta share closely and friendly relations based on a common heritage and democratic values. I appreciate the momentum imparted to our relations by the high-level exchanges in recent years. It is encouraging that the two countries are working closely to enhance economic and commercial relations. Our cultural ties have also strengthened with increasing popularity of yoga and Indian films in Malta. Excellency, please convey my warm regards to President Georgia Vallo. Excellency, relations between India and Botswana are grounded in a deep abiding trust complemented by common values. These relations have been nurtured by regular bilateral exchanges. The visit of your president for the third India-Africa Forum Summit provided a fresh impetus to our bilateral relationship. As two, develop, as two developing countries, we share similar views on issues of mutual interest. Excellency, please convey my warm regards to President Mo B. C. Masisi. Excellencies, 
it has been a pleasure to meet you all i wish you all success in your tenure in india and a safe and pleasant stay here thank you thank you rashpati ji for your remarks uh, to the heads of mission present may i have your permission to conclude the ceremony please